For the latest trends in carpets, vinyls and wood flooring, Des Kelly Interiors, where quality flooring costs less. Dry and clear tonight with lowest temperatures of 5 to 9 degrees. Wednesday will be another dry day with spells of hazy sunshine. And now you're up to date on News Talk. The Football Show on Off the Ball. Brought to you by the new and improved Boyle Sports Bet Builder. Now with 44 markets to choose from on every match. I'm prepared to edit and I can't. Well, do it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Well, here we are then, another football show. Chemical Man, a first football for, show for you in quite some time. Is that right? It sure is right. Right. It sure is right. Am I neglecting you? Well... Or am I neglect- neglecting the, the rest of the office? It's how we feel. Is it, yeah? I mean, we all have our own truth. It's how we feel. Okay. I don't know. I, I'm not getting a lot of love uh, coming back my way, Joel, to be honest with you. All I do is send you love. Do you? I meditate for 15 minutes a day and I send you good vibes. <laughs> I can imagine you actually doing that, believe it or not. So uh, Sergio Aguero, Kev, uh, 30 years old, scored 21 goals. He became only the second player to score 20 or more goals in six different seasons. Alan Shearer managed to do it in seven. Yeah. Three for Blackburn, four for Newcastle. That is um, scoring exploit one I wanted to put to you. Mm-hmm. Point two, Mo Salah and Sadio Mane have also hit at least... Uh, 20 goals each. This is only the fourth time in Premier League history that two players in the same team have scored more than 20 league goals oh, in a season. Oh, you're asking me a question here now, aren't you? So Mane and Salah have done it in 2018-19. Mm. Give me the other three pairings in Premier League history. Yolk and Cole. Who've managed over 20 league goals. No. No. Bloody, that's the one that comes straight into my head there. It's a good question, by the way, isn't it? Very, isn't very good, good question? question. I thought so too. Very, very good question. Now, I have Pat Nevin waiting in the wings. There's got to be someone, in, um, uh, Frank Lampard and Didier Drogba. Do you know what? I thought that was the trick one. Well done. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's one. I See, I thought the Lampard Drogba one would just throw you because the midfielder. I thought you'd be <laughs> thinking striking partnerships. <laughs> All right, that's one. Well done. Yeah. 2009 2010, Drogba. 29 goals. Yeah. Lampard, 22. Uh, do you know what? Out of all the strikers, Drogba's probably my favourite striker. I don't know what it is about Drogba. Drogba was just class. He was oh, I just Physically, he was great. Yeah. Everything about him. I, oh, t- he was great. He had, but played against him so much as well. But he was a... It, oh, what a player. What a player, Drogba. We'll, we'll pick that up with Pat in a second. Yeah. Um, okay. No looking. Can you give me some years then here? Um, we have won from the 90s. All oh, right. So it's, it's got to be Man United, surely. Someone from United. Um, no. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Big Sal. You see, someone has tweeted in straight away. Have they? 90s lads, got to be Shearer and Sutton. Ah, oh, yeah. Jeez, that's a, that's, that's a given, isn't it? And yet it's not. Is it not? <laughs> ah. It, extremely tough to get. 93-94, Newcastle United. Andy Cole and Peter Beasley. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Andy Cole with 34. How did that happen? And uh, Beasley with 21. Ah, Cole was class. Come on, Joe. 34 goals. Yeah, I know. 34, yeah. that was outrageous. But there was more games though then, wasn't there? More Premier League games. Were there? Yeah, before they reduced it from 22. Okay. So an extra few games, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, four. Yeah. Well, it's a big difference, isn't it? If you I suppose it is. I suppose it is. Yeah. Okay, so we have Andy Colin Beersley. We need this slot to pick up a bit of pace here. Right. We have Andy Colin Beersley. We is have it, is Drogba just, and Lampard. Bring, is Pat, Pat will be Googling. If Pat's listening, he's Googling away. He knows. <laughs> and then he comes in like, oh, yeah, I've got it straight away. Uh, so we have Salah and Mane. We have Drogba and Lampard. We have Beersley and uh, Cole. Your Did ne- there be anyone from um, your next Aguero and... Aguero Go on. A- and Go on. And um, I was thinking Jekyll, but go on. Um, I'm just messing with you. It's not Man City at all. Ah, you're a <laughs> piece of sh. Honestly. So it's in the last. Uh, it's in the last um, five years. We've had another duo do it. Van Nistelrooy Rooney. No. One more guess, and then we're, we really have to move on. Sorry, I was going to say Va- uh, Van Persie Rooney. Actually. Um, uh, Ah, come on, go, go on, move on. This is, this is just boring when you're hearing <coughs> dead, dead coming from... Pat and Evan, come on in. We make radio like this all the time, believe it or not, Pat. That was, um, that was some great A stuff there you just had to sit through. 
fantastic. No, I'm, a, I'm not any closer, by the way, than you're getting there. <laughs> Is that I'm right? I'm going back to the likes of Fowler and Collymore and um, so further back than that. Um, what was the other one? I was thinking of another one. can't remember. There was another one. Um, there's another oh, there was Sturridge and um, Suarez, maybe. That was another one. That Correct. Oh, class. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's class. Good. Correct. Nice get. 2013-14 season, Luis Suarez, 31 goals, as you might expect. Daniel Sturridge sweeping in at 21. Just shows how hard it is to do. I was sure Shearer and Sutton must have been. What was that? She- Sutton must have been about 17, 18, I would, I would imagine. I would, Very I, close, yeah. I would have thought so, Pat, yeah. I have to say, I would have went Sutton and Shearer as well mm. immediately because mm. it was so well known a partnership. And I also thought uh, Cole up front for United was going to be a stick on as well with AN other, uh, probably obviously York, but not the case. There you go. It's not easily done. So Salah and Mane were 22 apiece and just the fourth in Premier League history. So uh, it turned out the twist in the title race, Pat, was that there was no twist. Uh, there was a partial twist for a very short period of time, an incredibly <laughs> short period of time. Um, and it would have been really odd if Man City had blown it down at Brighton. Uh, it would have been a strange thing to see, but there was a moment it was on your mind. And remember, they just had those two 1-0 wins in a row, mm. um, up at uh, the one I was at at Burnley. Um, and then the other one with uh, the rocket shot from the centre-back company. So, you know, they did enough. They did plenty. Anyone who said they scraped it, can you scrape it with that many points? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it was incredible, you know, just how... And I still think that people are saying the argument or the discussion, and I'm guessing the question would be, are they the best team ever? I think they were better last year, oddly enough. Uh, they, uh, they're a better-looking team last year, yeah. and purely because of injuries. You know, De Bruyne injured, Silva, you know, as in the David version of it, maybe not as influential this season. And I thought Mendy was going to come in and make a big difference and he had no impact whatsoever. Um, pure, I don't know if that's injury or just mentality mm. or both of them. Um, but City are still looking quite good, I think. And Pat, you know, you were saying you, was, you were at the Burnley game. I, I wasn't at any of the City games, maybe the last four or five games of the season, but you're at those games watching them. I watched them on TV. I watched the Burnley game. I watched the Leicester game. There, there was a lot of edginess, or it seemed to me, from the terraces well coming in. Did you did you get that sort of feeling yourself as well while at the games? Of course there was edginess about it. Um, they weren't playing particularly well. We had a chat about it last week, um, just after the game, actually. You know, the, the dry pitch was a nightmare for them. They just couldn't zip the ball about. And it was this analogy of watching them uh, City play down at Spurs after their pitch was knackered by the, the NFL game. And they couldn't play that type of football on a bobbly and dry pitch. Uh, the Burnley pitch wasn't bobbly, but it was really dry. So zipping it around and getting out of your feet yeah. quickly. It's re- I mean, that's what their game's all about. It's incredible um, when they actually do it. But, you know, they're, they're perfectly capable of you know getting by people. I don't know about you a lot. Um, talking about Aguero's goal there, everyone's talking about Aguero's goal. What about David Silva's pass for that goal, the little back flight? That was unbelievable. <laughs> and he absolutely meant that. That was that was a highlight of that game for me. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, they're talking Man City about a bit of an exodus, I guess, due to age profile as much as anything. Aguero's 30, he should be okay. Company 33. Fernandinho, 34, will need replacing. And David Silva's been thrown into that at 33. I'm looking at David Silva and his makeup, and you know he's not prone to putting on weight. I wouldn't think, and it's not like he was built on blistering pace. Can David Silva not play in the Premier League till he's 43? No. <laughs> no. Well, you watched. You, you, you have to look at Xavi and Iniesta, and you know how long they went on. Eventually, it comes to us all. Mm. Eventually, you, you slow down. You know, you, you can't make the decisions as quickly, and the Premier League's a very, very, you know, strong, quick physical league and you can be muscled out of it um, and if you're not quick enough and he is has been sprayed and sharp all that t- sharp all that time mm. uh, the thing you have to put on top of it is you know the injuries will have an effect you know the late, the older you get that's the way it goes um, I think he's perfectly capable of playing a good number of games next season but you know when you look at the likes of Foden coming in and um, Bernardo Silva having the massive effect he's had uh, I, I, my temptation would be to keep David Silva an extra year at least just mm. to see how it goes mm. um, because what an effect he can have in the games as we say that little back flick that's as good as anything he was doing years ago but you got to move on that's just mm-hmm. the way the game is just now I think the bigger question is over Vincent Company. That, that's a more obvious question because the amount of times he you know he gets caught square you know and you know it's alright because he doesn't get shown up very often because they're not under pressure very often 
but they'll come up against good players and fast players. And you know, if you're looking at the likes of, you know, Sadio Mane, one and one against him, or you know, it, he's not going to do it. He's not going to be able to stick with them. So that's something they'll definitely need to consider. Um, but massive changes. The other one, everyone talks about Fernandinho, and he's brilliant, and they miss him. I still don't think that's the most difficult position to go and find another player for. Mm. There's a lot of players around the world that can do that um, and can do it pretty well. You know, they were looking, um, obviously they're looking at, you know, down at uh, Jorginho to do that job for them. And I think Jorginho would have been amazing for them. So there are a few players around the world that actually can do that job for them. I don't even know if they need to be that good defensively. You just need to be able to read the game and hold on to the ball well and, you know, pass it well. Mm. I, I don't think anything you can throw in off the back of what Pat said as well is the physicality in training every day. I think that's something that's maybe overlooked as well. The, 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 the pace that, that players are training at every single day now, in short, sp- in short uh, spaces, in short um, bursts it'll be, but physically, once you get beyond 30, 31, 32, it's, it's the demands that managers are putting on you on training because there's no hiding place even on the training ground now as well. No, it's a, it's a fair point. Just to, to go back to something you said there, Pat, I don't know, was it a slip of the tongue or, or maybe it's actually an interesting point I wasn't aware of. You said even your decision-making goes a touch as you get older. I would have thought it might be the opposite when you have more experience of seeing the game. No, it is up until a certain point. But when you know your body can do everything you want it to do, then that's fine because that all that's almost unthinking. You mm. know, that's mechanical. It happens. You put your body in positions. If it's an effort to do that, then you're not doing the visual stuff as well. So you have to have both of them working at the same peak yeah. as much as possible. So, you know, eventually that happens. It's, it's a little bit it's a little later that that kind of happens. You're talking to a guy who was playing at Stamford Bridge the other night, and it, trust me, it's happened at my age, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens to the legs as well, and it just gets accentuated, well, very, very quickly after, you know, 33, 34, 35, I think it, it really does. But, you know, he's capable, Silva, of playing to a level. Yeah. But you know the level they're aiming at? They're aiming at the very, very top level, mm. and there's just no room for sentiment. Simple as that. Yeah, true. Uh, something I wanted to get both your thoughts on... Um, Guardiola. Any signs of burnout with Guardiola or a sabbatical on the way, or is he is he looking pretty well, okay? He, to he, he mentioned it at the start of last season, didn't he? After winning the, the Premier League, was the, they wanted to seriously target the Champions League? That's where he saw the next step for him. He, he's, how long is it now since Pep Guardiola's in the Champions League? For a number of years, wouldn't it? Since he, he left Barcelona, five six years now at least. So that's what he targeted last year. So. I don't. I can't see. Him, I mean, unless it gets to a stage where the, the side weren't competing at the Champions League level and weren't competing maybe in Premier League level, which could happen over the next few years if there is a transfer ban in place. If there is, a, well, of course, there could be potentially a year's uh, ban from the Champions League as it is. If all this comes into place, then potentially could step away. But I think that's what he wants more than anything. He wants a Champions League. He wants another Champions League, but more so now with this Man City side because they are good enough. Let's be honest. They're more than good enough to go and win the Champions League. And I think the football that Pat touched on last season they were playing arguably deserved it probably playing the best football around any, of any side around Europe so yeah that's where he would go I think that's where he would look at next for all his brilliance Pat two Champions Leagues as manager the last one eight years ago it's not like he's dominated the tournament yeah it's a hard tournament to win um, but you're, I agree that that team that Man City team of the last couple of years was good enough to win it but it's a hard trophy to win you know, you, you know weird things happen in cup competitions but particularly that competition and you can come up against something absolutely extraordinary on the day. Well, you tend to find a lot of extraordinary things happen mm. in the Champions League this this season, no different from any other season. Um, just with the ball dropping another way, you know, that offside near the end of the game, you know, against Tottenham Hotspur, you know, they're through. And mm. would you bet against them? Well, I wouldn't. Mm. So mm. it's that tiny, tiny fine margin that's just not worked for him. And he knows how hard that is, how important it is. But to ask the question you were asking Kev there, I can't see him walking away from it at all. I, it looks to me and it sounds to me that he's got a bit between his teeth and he wants to build that as a you know a dynasty there. That's mm. something that can be really special and it, it feels absolutely like his. And it still feels to me that he's at the start, not the start of it, but midway through it. You mm. know, I don't think he's anywhere near the end of that. Um, the next two or three. The problem he's got is you know the st- stuff we're reading in the papers just now about the possibility of them not being allowed to play in a Champions League. Or if there's any difficulty getting the types of players in that he wants to get in, 
we shall see if that affects him. But I, I, I look at him and I think the guy looks absolutely driven by it just now. And I think he loves what's happening with Liverpool. I think he absolutely adored that. You know, probably more in retrospect that there's a team that couldn't go and chase them. And I, mean, I watch, I'm sure we all do, I watch a lot of Italian football just now. Well, you ain't going there because mm. the standard's miles below, mm. miles below the, the Premier League. I mean, it's real distance. So where is it left? Well, you've been to Bayern, you've done Barca. To be fair, what is there? Yeah. You know, mm. can you see Pep hanging about with PSG? I couldn't no, see it there. No, He'd really. be both senseless with that. Be incredibly He's boring. exactly the right place to be. And it's a big thing to walk away for that because what else is there? Mm. I can't see what else, unless it's a rebuild of Barca, but that's a tough one for mm. him. Uh, for Liverpool now, they have this horrible three-week wait. Yeah. It's funny, you know, Gary Breen was on before Kev and he was saying he never liked the June international window because especially if you're in championship, the wait is interminable. And yeah. the Irish players have a four-week wait, Premier League players, championship like a five-week wait yeah. to, uh, for a game. Um, and Pat, you were writing about this very interestingly on the Chelsea website. Like this is no this is no fun, and I, I really can sympathise. Like, do you train? Do you not train? I, there's no one size fits all approach, obviously. But um, three week wait for Spurs and Liverpool, and then a four week wait for all the international players to get these annoying fixtures out of the way is uh, is no fun. I, I I think that competition's a joke. Uh, it's a disgrace that you're playing games then, considering the amount of players that were you know pushed through the ring in a World Cup. You've got African Nations Cups players, they'll, they'll be wrecked again as well. Mm. Um, giving people a chance to recover, the injuries that, that happen because of it are an absolute nightmare. Um, I, I, Mary, I wrote in that piece when I was writing today, was I remember playing against Estonia in mm. June. And you know, hammered them, I you know, scored a couple, made a goal, you know, 3 1, absolutely fine. I, I've never been more tired in my life. I was wrecked. And it's a psych- psychological thing because, yeah, you've kept on training, that's fine. But your body turns off. I mean, Kev, I'd like to ask you about it because mm. that's happened to me all the time. Many times did you get ill just after the end of the season when your body <laughs> shut down? Yeah. Might have been because of the partying as well, Pat, that might have happened for, <laughs> for a little bit as well. But uh, no, I, 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 you're spot on. I think you, you, that when you switch off, mentally you're switching off, so your body automatically switches off with that. And because you've been you've been going through through adrenaline for such a long time, particularly towards the end of the season, whatever state you're in, whether it's you're challenging for something, whether or not you, you're fighting against relegation, it's that release, isn't it? That relief, whatever you've done, whatever you've achieved, it's like, oh. Even us lowly office workers will often get a bit sick on our holiday. Really? Yeah. Will you? Yeah. E- even, even at these plummeting, these depths, these, physic- <laughs> these physical depths. Mentally. It's mental abuse. That's what it is, Joe. It must be. But I, I, it's, it's probably a phenomenon that goes across all jobs. You just keep going. You're on the treadmill. It's almost when you yeah. go on holiday, you can... Yeah. <laughs> if there's an analogy, the amount of people that say they have heart attacks just after they retire. Right. Um, but yeah. the, the best one is, the, the, the biggest thing why it's footballs or you know, whatever other sports that are, you know, that are playing at the very highest level, your body is on the edge the whole time mm. because you have you've got no extra weight on, you are taking it to the edge of your capabilities all the time. Mm. So you're on the edge. So there's no reserves to fight against it. And if you just switch off, it, I'm sure there should be st- more studies done onto it. Um, the medics and all the teams will be looking at this really, really closely. But you can look at it all you like. It's just sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. So uh, it's horrible. I've I've yet to meet a player who likes these ones that have got a gap between it. Some you know for some it's good. You know Harry Kane. I'm probably delighted yeah. if he can get back in time. Great news for him. Mm. The one or two players. Mm. It's great news for the vast majority of them. It's it's a it's a nightmare. It's yeah. horrible. It's not. I want to go on the beach. It isn't that. It's so right. Yeah, sorry, I think for Harry Kane, it's perfect for him, isn't it? That's and, the and one for him. For Mino, for Mino as well. Do, Pat, did I read at the weekend as well that Chelsea are, are taking the team away to America before the Europa League final? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's, it's a separate well, issue, but I mean, that, that could, in many respects, keep them a bit more focused ahead of the game. I'm not too sure the players would be too happy, the manager would be too happy, but in some respects, that could be a decent thing for them. I would have thought so. Well, I'm driving down to London tomorrow from where I am. It's a seven-hour drive. I'll get there. The game's at one thirty in the morning, so I'm going to be doing it through oh the night dear. or Chelsea TV, right? So I don't get a violins out for me. I will be shocked to see a team full of all the very, very top players. Yeah. In there must be game. some sort of obligation to play the better players, Hazard or whoever it would be that's part of that squad. We need to, we need to see the stars, or surely. 
yeah, I think they'll be through a few injuries thrown in there. There's a bit of pressure on them. The, the real pressure is, is not actually the finances. The real pressure is the reason for the game. The game specifically is a, an anti-racism, anti-Semitism game uh, to celebrate that and work against that and fight against that. Um, so that's the whole reason for that game and to make a big public statement about it all over America as well. So that's they have to do. You have to bring some players, but. If you look at it, Chelsea, Chelsea have got a group of players that they played in the Europa League and hardly any of them were playing every week in the league. And they were fairly big-ish names. So yeah. I suspect not all the players mm. will be there. And the ones that you know, the ones that are there might play 10 minutes. And to be fair, I'm not expecting this to be a high-tempo game. But it's not. I don't think it's perfect. And I agree with Sari. I think it's... Uh, I don't think Chelsea bargain for being in a Europa League final to be fair when they mm. decided to go for that game. And just the last one on this I'll throw it to both of you um, maybe you'll, you'll be closer to the sports science or not uh, like will Liverpool and Spurs the relatively healthy players not the Harry Kane's coming back your standard James Milner type well maybe he trains every day but will the, will the standard player train every day for three weeks or like mentally will you say Go lie on a beach this week and come back. To well, us. I, I would. I was actually thinking about it, t- talking about. It. I, I would imagine there would be an element of both managers, Pochettino and Klopp, saying, "Look, have till Wednesday, Thursday off, or whatever." It be. I, d- I doubt they're going to get a week off. They won't. They, they, really? they, they can't risk that. Right? They Why not? Well, you, you're saying you have got two weeks off after that. Yeah. But I, I think it's more even. Pat's touched about the mental side when your body switches off. Your body switches off, then it's trying to get up again. Jared Hulier, I think, had had some sort of plan in place that for every. Every day you have off, you need three days. So every week you have off, you need three weeks to get yourself prepared, which I don't agree with at all, but he, that's what he used to tell the players when they went away. So he had training plans accordingly across the summer when, they, when okay. they'd have it off. So I doubt very much that would be the case. I, I think what he, what he could do, probably say, look, have three or four days off, come in Thursday, Friday, have a weekend off, and then we start as normal going into the Monday ahead of like a normal week's training session because there'll be an element of physical training within that real physical training within the, the three weeks that they've got. I know Pochettino certainly will do that and I would imagine Klopp would be the same. Mm. I, I think the the most important thing, the finals will take care of themselves, that's fine. The problem's going to be those international games that are hang, hanging around at that sort of time for in the Nations Cup. I think a lot of the players will either A, won't go, mm. or B, will be a shambles. Mm. It'll just be a mess. Mm. And, and, you know, and it is the Nations League, so... You yeah, but there's qualifiers as well, though, for a lot of players as well. That's the thing, though, but the qualifiers come after... The, the Champions League are in and around those nation, yeah. uh, nations. Ireland, right? Ireland, Ireland have Denmark away in the Euro qualifiers. Like and, and we've got Denmark and Gibraltar, which Gibraltar, fair enough at home, but the, <clears> the Denmark game's huge for us, and Christian Eriksen will be part of that Denmark team that'll be playing us uh, over there in, in Denmark. Oh, I, well, look, I'd be on a beach sipping a beer. Whatever happens, <laughs> happens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I wouldn't worry too much about Eriksen because he's one of the players whose form really fell off the edge of a cliff yeah. near the end of the season, along with a number of other Spurs players there. And he'll, he'll lift it again now, but if he didn't turn up for the Denmark games or wasn't in great form, I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. Mm. I'm not saying don't worry about him, but that's when it actually might work in uh, Ireland's favour. Yeah, well, hopefully. Um, I guess we're drawing to a close. We'll probably take a bit of a break, and we, I'd say we'll speak to you the Monday after the Champions League final, and then we're kind of into summer territory. How will you remember the 2018-19 season beyond this Manchester City-Liverpool two-horse race? It's really hard actually to take anything else out of it because yeah. it was that massive time where every team had a brilliant you know, well the top we're talking top six here. They had a brilliant run and they all had stinkers as well. Um but what's come to what's come to pass and very, very obvious, they've fallen miles behind. Mm. Um, Liverpool have kept it up, but the rest have fallen miles behind. So the jump that has to be made by Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester United is, is massive just now. And I just wonder how many of them are looking up towards City and Liverpool or else looking behind towards the likes of Everton you know and the others that can mm-hmm. actually get close and maybe even Wolves or whatever that can actually make a great season next season mm-hmm. that's that's the biggest concern mm-hmm. for that yeah it's at an interesting point actually to see which way well Man United in particular but that cohort will go I would suspect money will dictate they'll go more towards the Liverpool Man City end I, do you know what I, I saw a thing in the newspaper today which I hadn't realised I hadn't seen it's one of, it was in the Times, um, and I've not, not done these numbers at all. Yeah. They absolutely stunned me. They put the, the where the teams had finished in the league, and then they put their wage bill. Absolutely, by wage bill, 
one to twenty. Yeah, it was exactly correct. This was in the <laughs> this was in the soccer nomics book a couple of years ago, um, mm. and it was it was talking about the futility, you know, the futility of trying to chase a good manager, yeah. and uh, they had long established that the biggest indicator as to where your team will finish is by some distance wage bill, and and that seems not to and have it's changed. Almost I think it's actually perfect. I think it's one to twenty. Right. And it's every single one of them in the correct place for which yeah. if it's not that, it's like there's about a hundred thousand and one of them that's switched around. It is absolutely incredible. And some of the differences are not huge. They're not many, many millions. Yeah. Some of the differences are quite small, but it's stunning how close it's clo- it is to that. So United fingers and uh, hands into the pockets and make sure you spend a few quid. Yeah, I mean, the, the United thing is it's, it's really incredible the way it's blown up. So we'll have to see what happens there over the summer. Uh, in terms of quality of the league, Kev? Well, I just, I just, I, I just wrote it down. They're Liverpool top for 114 days, top defence, one defeat, second best attack. You know, when you've got these things that go with Liverpool, Liverpool have done absolutely everything to go and win the league this year. Every other season it happens, doesn't it? So the, the quality has been there, certainly from the top two. Um, Arsenal and United inconsistent. Tottenham, even but Tottenham lose eleven games, I think this season. I mean, that's yeah. by their own standards what they've set over the last few years. That that was that was a, a a pretty poor thing from there. It's poor outside those top two. Leicester have come back a little bit. Everton have finished off the season well, but I think that this this season was all about those top two and and, and who was going to get over it. And we've got two of the best sides, as it's been proven, two of the best sides around. And it's been it's been great seeing them, and particularly City. The the pressure that was on them. Having to win 14 games on the trot to win the league, that is, it's an unbelievable mental strength. And, and uh, with the pressure on them to, to be able to replicate performance after performance after performance, keep going and even win a little bit ugly. Pat was saying about the games that he was at. When they were under a bit of pressure, they showed a different side to it as well. But um, yeah. I'm looking forward. I'd be interested to see next season because so often early on in, in, in seasons gone by, you, you lose a few games early, I'd be fine, you can, you can get it back. Now all of a sudden he, he, he seems all that that could be season defining. Oh, totally. Liverpool's draws earlier on. They see the, yeah. the season defining now, and that's well, this, where it's gone so different. You know, it's, it's been, so different. It's been funny to look at football and how it's invo- evolved. Like it now seems quaint the days of Alex Ferguson saying, "Well, if we're just somewhere in the mix around Christmas, it's yeah. fine." And then Mourinho came along, and suddenly he realised actually we need to start winning from moment one. And we are now entering the new phase uh, with these two, where frankly you can't afford to have a defeat all season. Liverpool have had one, I know too many draws, but that's kind of where we're at, at, Pat. I guess uh, with the final look to next year, are you expecting that relentless pace from City and Liverpool next year? Definitely from Liverpool, maybe from... No, definitely from City, Yeah. maybe from Liverpool. Yeah. It's a huge huge ask. Um, The possibility of doing it is there purely because they've got I would say Van Dijk's the most important player. You know, you're not going to lose that many goals. He, there was a there was a stat the other day there that I read that he had no one had dribbled past him this season, and then that stat went down. One person got by him. <laughs> yeah. When's the last thing you remember? Do you know the last yeah. person I remember like that playing against? There was one guy, and I can remember going past him and thinking, "I beat him." And I never thought of it, but anybody else, and it was Paul McGrath. Paul McGrath, I was, was going to guess. I was going to guess, yeah. It didn't happen often. It was the weirdest thing. Everybody else you can beat, and you'll beat them sometimes, and you won't. But if you beat Paul McGrath, wow. Yeah. And then Van Dijk's exactly like that just now. And if you've got somebody like that there with a sensible you know, defence around him and a decent keeper, that will keep them on track. Mm. If Van Dijk gets injured... Wrap it up. They're not going to stick with it. No chance. Okay. One thing I throw in as well: Liverpool have not finished in the top four in any season after finishing second. Oh wow! Well, there you go. Um, there you uh, go. You love a good start, John. I do. I do. I do. Uh, very lastly, Paul McGrath is obviously a kind of cult hero here, Pat. What was it about trying to face McGrath one on one that was so difficult? Um, he, he read things really well. He was unbelievably strong. He was stupidly quick for somebody. Well, you you all know all the stories mm. about him. You know, that lack of training, no knees, all that sort of stuff. But he just read it really well and his balance was fantastically good as well. So when, when you did do it, you had to do all the normal dummies. You're wasting your time because he read them so incredibly well. So you were trying rather extreme things and odd things and you were trying to find ways to get him off balance. But he's an unbelievably hard guy to get off balance. Mm. It seems an obvious thing to say because everyone should have good balance, but he never seemed to go off balance. Um, so, you know, just very, very special player in that way. And there's, I mean, I've 
played against. I mean, you look at world football, there's some like that, but they're very, very few and far between. And he was exceptional for it. And I can tell you right now, I can remember right, I can close my eyes right now and remember the time I'd done him. It was in the box for Chelsea against Man United, done him, scooped the ball over, Mickey Hazard scored. So it even led to a goal. So that one stuck in the memory. <laughs> uh, shall we not mention the amount of times he got the ball off me right now? No, of course not. Of course not. They're, they're forgotten. <laughs> uh, <Until> they're <laughs> let's, um, let's check in, I guess, the Monday after the Champions League final then, Pat. That's, that's probably the best I plan. have no idea where I'll be that time. I hope that's not when I'll be in Baku. Um, no, oh dear, yeah, that. before. Yeah, you'll be in Baku the 29th. So enjoy that. And we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get- See you. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Pat and Evan there, take a short break, and then we're back with more from myself and Kev. Boil Sports, now with same-day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. News Talk Breakfast. You say there's confusion. It's pretty straightforward. It's Don't not. drink if you've alcohol it's, in your system. It's, it's, yes, but it's, it's, that's a very simplistic... Uh, lazy analysis, if you don't mind me saying. I, I, I don't think it's lazy at all. No, I think it, it's, it's lazy to suggest the opposite. It is absolutely lazy from this point in time, from this uh, perspective. Really, I would have thought how it's law-abiding is, is the term for it. How does somebody know when the alcohol is gone through their system? Well, if you're in doubt, and don't drive. Well, you see... That's the philosophy I'd from. adopt. News Talk Breakfast with Shane Coleman and Kieran Cuddihy. In association with AIR. Weekday mornings at 7 on News Talk. When your summer sounds like this, instead of this, you need to find a way to escape the misery of hay fever. New Nasacort Nasal Spray is a unique once-a-day hay fever treatment whose special formula stays where it's sprayed, providing effective relief from congestion, sneezing, and an itchy, runny nose. Start each summer's day the Nasacort way, and you could be on a path to your perfect summer. Ask your pharmacist for details. Contains triamcinolone acetonide. Always read the label. At FBD Insurance, we understand the get-up-and-go Irish spirit. That's why we offer great value car insurance. Switch to FBD Car Protect today and you can get a no-claims discount of up to 75%. For a quote, call 017 617 617 or visit fbd.ie. FBD Insurance. Protection. It's in our nature. 75% 75% based on five years no claims discount. Acceptance criteria, terms and conditions apply. Underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. FBD Insurance Group Limited Trading as FBD Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. 
If you're thinking of buying a residential rental property, ICS Mortgages can provide an excellent range of flexible buy to let mortgages, including interest only terms of up to 15 years. We'll also help you to refinance your existing portfolio and grow your property investments. Call 1890 427 427, visit icsmortgages.ie or contact your local mortgage broker. ICS Mortgages, the property investor's choice. Lending criteria, terms and conditions apply and are subject to change. The entire amount that you have borrowed will still be outstanding at the end of the interest-only period. Dilosk DAC, trading as Dilosk and ICS Mortgages, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. At Beacon Hospital, we've once again invested in modern medicine, upgrading our radiotherapy machine to the latest in technology, the Varian Edge. The first and only machine of its kind in Ireland, the Edge offers a non-invasive cancer treatment using extreme precision to target and destroy tumours faster and more effectively. Beacon Hospital. We've got the Edge on cancer. Referral required. For more information, visit beaconhospital.ie. You know the quickest shortcuts with zero surprises. You know where to find the best vinyl. You know the perfect time of day to visit the farmer's market and the liveliest venues in town for every occasion. As the Park Assist feature eases your Seat Arona SUV into your usual space, you realise you know the city inside out. It's your city, your Arona. Own your city with finance so low, there's zero to think about. SUV, Seat Urban Vehicles. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Here we are. I was going to guess Paul McGrath oh, with Pat and Evan. I was going to guess Paul McGrath, honestly. Paul McGrath. We should try and get him on the show one night. Get him in, Joe. Cla- I, I, I had a goldfish called Paul McGrath when I was a kid. Won it in the fair. Did you name it or did the fair? Of course fair? I named yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paul McGrath. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. He was class, wasn't he? Absolute class. He's, he's the one that the lads you would always say, that the, the lads who I came into the squad with after, after Paul had retired say that genuinely was world class. Mm. Genuine mm. world class player. Mm. Yeah. No, that uh, certainly seems to be the case. Yeah, let's do it next season. Or even in the build-up to the season, let's try and yeah. wait. Do you know, actually, let's do it at a road show. Do it yeah. in the crowd because it's always good. Um, what was it going to do? Oh, yeah. Just on uh, Man City and do they have to rebuild or are they uh, impenetrable for the years going forward? Brian Kerr was on duty at the Amex at the weekend. He was chatting to Stephen Doyle uh, talking about how he sees City over the summer. City will keep lads, Brian, but they'll have no trouble keeping lads. But there's a few key men there. Vincent Company on his way out, probably David Silva could be on his way out. Sergio Aguero's could be on the wrong side of 30. I know he's had a brilliant season this season. Um, is Pep going to have a bigger kind of, I suppose, rebuild this summer than Jurgen Klopp will? And in, you know, with that in mind, do you think Liverpool actually might have a better chance of doing the title next well, season? I. As a, as a, as a, in my moments of idleness before the game today, I counted up the number of games Vincent Company's played in the last four seasons. Would you believe the total is 80? Which makes it that he's averaged 20 games a season across all competitions in the last four years. Once one season he played 12 games, yeah, two seasons ago he played 12 games. So he hasn't been a major part of these victories in the last few seasons. He's been probably important as a captain. He's probably spent a lot of time in the in the medical room and in the gym and so on and hanging about. I'm sure it's been very frustrating for him. The delight the of him scoring the goal against Leicester um, on Monday obviously was was a lot of that delight would have been driven by the frustration of not playing often enough. So you know, Stones, Otamendi are there. Laporte has shown himself a class act. Uh, they may well add another player to that to that position. They've got Zinchenko, I think. I don't think they'll try and sell Zinchenko this year. It looked like he you was on the way out last back, year. Don't you can, you can yeah, but, 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 well, I think he played the back, well, left-back role very well. I mean, they won every game he's played. You think he's played 22 games in the Premier League uh, between this year and last year, and they've won every one of them. I think he's played well. But I'm sure they'll have to squad. The question on the Guero, I mean... You know, I, I think two years ago the manager felt Jesus was going to be the one, Aguero was going to be the bit player, but he wasn't having that and he proved himself again that he well, the one thing he has he's adapted his game to what Aguero what sorry, Guardiola wants. Aguero has had to had to become a chaser, a harasser, a nuisance to defenders as required by the manager. And while you're at it just keeps scoring on thirty two goals, I think, this season, twenty one in the league. So I think there's certainly another couple of seasons in him 
and what they may, you might see is more rotation and having playing less games, less of the less of the games that he thinks the, the manager think he can win without playing them. Uh, David Silva. Yeah, maybe he, he has been an absolutely wonderful player in the Premier League all the time he's been here in England. Outstanding player. Will this be his last match or his last season or his last match in the Cup Final? I don't know yet, but it seems like he's talking about maybe moving on. But the emergence of Bernardo Silva, I think, and the fact that he is... He probably could be just as effective on that left side as on the right side. And the way he plays today, not playing the advanced position, playing in the in the dropped off positions, I'd call it, in the three in midfield, and getting Mares into the team shows the equality they have. And you think of how important Yaya Toure was to them in the past, and he, he, he just faded away gradually. We've seen Gundogan's emergence now with the injuries to Kevin De Bruyne, who was the outstanding player in the league probably last season, a bit player this year because of his injuries, and, and maybe brought on by playing at the World Cup and Belgium playing a long time at the World Cup. Many of the, many of the players did, but De Bruyne hasn't had an outstanding season because it's been an injury ravage, I suppose you'd call it. But he's still come. He'll come back better than ever, I would say. Um, so you know they're not short of options. They, they've had they've had six for the three midfield positions, and Gundogan has emerged as being one of the top three. I think this year, or it, maybe it'll be four from three. But I think Gundogan is in there now. Fernandino has a bit of work to take that place as, as well. So look, whoever challenges next year, they're going to have a, a big job to overtake this team. There we are, BK rocking it with Stephen Doyle at the Amex. What a what a pairing! What a pair! Offer some coddle Dublin, after that. Dublin's finest, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, any final thoughts on Man City? Then how they're shaping up? Is company going to stay? If, yeah. he's ha- if he's happy to be a good influence. Well, that is the thing. It's are you going to play with restricted appearances? Which Brian touched on something great. The, the, the point that he made right at the start was: look at the amount of games he's played over the last five or six years. Of it is, he's not played more than more than thirty at any stage during the last few years. Um, John Stones kicking his heels a bit. Yeah, I, I was surprised. John Stones hardly played since Christmas. I've certainly got not many starts since Christmas anyway in the Premier League. Is there some massive weakness with him defensively? Like that's the that is the very popular cliche thing to say about John Stones. I I, I think he's okay defensively. Yeah. I must say. Is, well, there, is there an issue? No, not not that I've seen under Guardiola. But Guardiola has stressed the fact is that you're a centre half in my side. You're not a defender. Yeah. You're you're a you're the, your start of our attack. That's the way that it is. And he looks the perfect player for 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 Guardiola's side. Mm. So. I was surprised of his lack of... Because he's, he's better on the ball, let's be fair, he's better on the ball than company. He's yeah. better at, at stepping into midfield. So that's been the only surprising thing. But, I mean, they're in great shape, they are. It's, it's just a, this uncertainty at the moment around them with this investigation that's going into the club, whether or not that's going to affect them long term if they do get put out of the Champions League. Are they then going to be able to recruit? That's That uh, remains the to be issue. seen yet. Uh, just if you're unsure what, what exactly is going on with that investigation. So this is all blown up, really, in the last 24 hours. The New York Times taking the lead here. Uh, basically, City have come out today and said they're, play- they're fully cooperating in good faith with UEFA's um, investigation. Basically, UEFA opened an investigation into the alleged financial irregularities earlier this year. This was all the football league stuff, which brought their attention to it. So the New York Times said that the leader of this uh, UEFA panel who are doing the investigating... Uh, headed up by the former Belgian Prime Minister, apparently. Uh, they are going to come to UEFA and say, we've done our investigations, we want Man City to have a one-season ban from European competition. And uh, Man City have said they're cooperating, they have no case to answer. But um, it seems UEFA mean business here. Like in the New York Times, they did make the point in the piece that if UEFA is unable to establish a case and enforce some kind of punishment, then it does risk everybody looking at finan- financial fair play and saying this thing is meaningless, mm. you know. And they say in the time several officials and the financial control bodies have said privately that their reputations could be harmed if the work is seen to be toothless. Now what they can absolutely bet on is Man City hiring every lawyer in the world and yeah. say we're going we're to drag this out until, you know, you guys have no money left. So we'll have to see. It would be absolutely unexpected. I have to say, if um, Man City were suddenly banned for financial you think? I don't know, Joe. I mean, you away from FIFA, in, in my eyes now, they've got to be whiter than white. Um, every every organisation that's playing within, under UEFA's remit, FIFA's remit, have got to, have got to, have got to apply, have got to comply, should I say. And that's the, 
that's the thing here. If there's anything that comes up, they can't be seen to be Pushing taking under. it easy on them. Maybe. Look, look what happened with, with was it the, the German Federation president a few weeks ago and taking a watch? There was probably, I think there was other things around it. Taking a gift of uh, a Rolex yeah, or whatever yeah. it was, had to resign from his post over. You know, the, this sort of thing is going to become commonplace. As soon as you get under, as soon as you're under pressure from your UEFA, I, I, I think. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I think there's more to it with this yeah. city thing. And okay. yeah, I mean, I, I I wasn't on the show the night that you were on, but there's so much paperwork. Well, you really there? have been, Kev. <laughs> good comeback. <laughs> Very good comeback, Joel. <laughs> Surprising for you, actually. You've got a good comeback. Very good, yeah. Uh, you see, don't get personal. Just because I had a good I'm comeback. I'm just saying. Well, I'm not getting personal. I'm just saying <laughs> a fact. Can I tell you something else, then? Yeah. So, Zinedine Zidane has pretty much made it clear what's happening with Gareth Bale, which is get out of my club. Yeah. Um, the quote is, it is very clear that Gareth Bale um, was dropped from Real Madrid squad for their loss to Sociedad the other week. So, um, Jonathan Barnett, I don't know if you saw this, this oh, Bale's agent. Was he, was he half pissed at the time as well? We can't uh, libel someone. Then again, it's not libelous to say someone was uh, had a few drinks. It looked to me, he was at the races, it looked like an ascot yeah. kind of gig. Yeah. He looked fairly happy. Loose. Let's just say he was loose He's, anyway. Yeah, Far yeah. too loose for my liking. So he was giving it the old Sky Sports News. Well, if someone can pay us enough yeah. money. Yeah. Look, you need a lot of money. A lot together. of money. And he was he was effectively saying, you know, Bale's been in the top three. That, that, three that interview in the world. was everything that's wrong about modern day football. <laughs> Honest to God, I, I thought that, Joe. As soon as I was watching, I was like, yeah, well, come course. on, come on. If I was Gareth Bale, I would have been watching saying, no, do I want this guy representing me? I don't want to put that image out there. No chance. It was uh, a little bit entitled and it was a real, you know, show us the money Premier League yeah. clubs. But um, uh, Zidane basically dropped him for the Sociedad game. He was asked if Bale was fit to play. He said yes. And he said, it's very clear what I've done this weekend. Yeah. So, uh, Bale is not for Zidane. There was talk of Spurs on loan, I, I was reading over the last, okay. uh, last couple of days as well, sending back to Spurs on loan, whether that'll be the case for him, I don't know. There is a real problem with his injury profile, and, you yeah. know, like, he, if you're going to spend that much money on someone, you really do need him to be fit for the big games, and he just hasn't managed to prove his yeah. fitness properly, so oh. I don't know. Who'd be in for him? Manchester United, just out of sheer desperation, <sighs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be will the have case to, well. because they can't attract the, big players. The, the thing is, I, I, I touched on it before when we were on to Pat about the the pace on training when it gets to the gets to players as well. I doubt very much the pace on Real Madrid's training would be that of a Tottenham, Man City, Liverpool. I wouldn't be so sure if, if Pochettino was still in there and, and the pace that they train at day in day out. I doubt very very much that Gareth Bale's body would be able to do that. Now, if he could sustain it and get himself fit and get himself right, that's the sort of training he'd probably need long term. I would think anyway because he'd be able to build up a, um, a sort of tolerance to, with his injuries. I, I, that's the way that I would have felt yeah. through, throughout my career anyway. So. I, I don't know if they'd be prepared to take him back on that, on that because of the lack of games that he's played and maybe the lack of time he's had actually on the training ground yeah. would certainly go against him. Yeah. It is one of the great things we underestimate when you talk about a player's ability to make it. It's the ability to train every day. Yeah, I know. So many bodies just say, I'm not built for this. Yeah, it is. And that's, there's, so, there's so many talented players, yeah. so many talented players that are so good, pff, ability off the scale. Yeah. Yet when they're asked to do it at pace constantly, day in, day out, and as I mean, I said before, there's no hiding place. You're, you're monitored every mm. day now. So you, you can't, yeah. you can't get out of it. I remember in Niall Quinn's book. He talked about some players Sunderland, real hot shot, just can't, couldn't handle the daily running every day, and yeah. just had to. It, it is. It was terrible. Like, but he was uber talented. Yeah. Um, you obviously could run all day. Yeah, well, yeah, that's all. That's all I could do. Many would say, Joe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was getting at. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Joe. That's harsh. Now, come on. Uh, I'd like to think I'd, I'd, I'd some sort of ability thrown in there as yeah, well. You think but, what you want. But I, I, yeah, again, it's, yeah, that's that's my that's my opinion, Joe. I'm entitled to that. You are. Um, but it is that that was a thing as I as I progressed through my career. You know, year upon year, that was. A, and again, Quinny Quinny touched on that say in the book there. You know, you're training at started in the old Division 3, League 2 as it is now, stepped up League 2, mm. League 1, should I say, then the Championship, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a decent progression, you know, you're getting the international sets up, you're fine, but as soon as you get into the Premier League as well, everyone's just at it every right. single day, right. every single day now, for but everything that you think that you should, you, I mean, they are training hard at I, I was lower leagues. Can, can, um, are the days of Paul McGrath not training and getting away with the weekend gone, like Ledley King, like, with, with, with Bale in mind? Yeah, it's a great show. I, I don't know. I don't think it could be. I don't think. I don't. I, I, I don't think a man, most managers wouldn't let you get away with it now. Now, if you're a supreme talent like Paul was, then you know there, there may be certain exceptions, certain clubs that would would be able to to carry to carry him. I mean, Bale's going to need to do more running. 
yeah, I, I would feel that. I would feel that day in, day out. He'd, ha- he'd probably, and that was the thing, I think, Real Madrid have a certain type of manager that goes in there that makes them feel good. There's obviously there's some sort of physical training with, yeah. within it, but I doubt very much that, that that squad of players are training at the, the levels that Liverpool and Tottenham are training at, yeah. I, and yeah. even City. I doubt, I doubt they are. Uh, short break, final thoughts in a moment. <laughs> 